Quilter friends, it's Kay from OK Quilting. I get a lot of questions about how to change settings in Pro Stitcher. And so I thought that I would make you a little video, but this video comes with a warning. It is easy to change things in the settings of Pro Stitcher and not realize maybe that you've changed them and that can cause you a great deal of strife down the line. So please be careful because with much power comes much responsibility and I'm giving you power and you need to be careful what you change, all right? But it is important to know these things because as you become more and more proficient with Pro Stitcher, you will want to adjust some of these things. So let's go take a look and see what you can do. Here is our Pro Stitcher screen. And right now I am in simulation. So this is green. And we will talk about that because that can happen to you. I can't change it right now because I am on a laptop, but you may get there. So first of all, let's talk about where are the settings. All right, so they're way up here in the right hand side. The little gear is settings. So let's click on that. And then, um, so we don't actually have any tabs selected because we're over here in this settings tab, but we can still see that the ribbon changed. So let's talk about, we're gonna talk about these one at a time. So display, when you're in the display, over here in the sidebar, it has two things, touch and assign. If right now touch is selected, if I deselect it, notice that all my icons got really small and we lost the descriptions of what they are. So let me just toggle that back on and off. That's off, that's with touch on. I always use it with touch on. Okay, I've been using Pro Stitcher for years. I still keep it that way. So just know that that's what it is. And then assign. If I click on assign, what's going to happen is over here on the very far left side, my quick access tools just change. So that's what that side is called, are the quick access tools. And we have tools over here that we should not be messing around with. You do not want to get rid of undo, redo, baseline. Those are some of the most used tools in Pro Stitcher. Please don't change those. Now, ruler. I use ruler a lot. You might not. Follow is one that I can do without. I hardly ever use it. So let's say that if I wanted to change follow, if I click on this little dot, I have all these options. Well, one option that I would love to have all the time is my base button. So generally I have changed based to, I mean, I have changed follow to based. Now I can't add any buttons over here. There is a set number, but I can change them. Now another one, and then when I'm done with it, I just click back over here on, and now it's going to stick as based. I would not mess with drag. You need drag and drop, and it's hard to find other, other ways. Grid might be one. All grid does is it turns your grid on and off, okay? So that might be one that you would wanna change. These are all your options, okay? You can do half stitch, full stitch, gears, whatever. Um, scroll, design. Most of these I don't think are super helpful, but mark might be, you know, maybe you use mark a lot. Whatever you want to do, and, and you can change this for each individual um, you know, project that you're doing. Measure, I never get rid of measure, I like measure, and I would never change my channel locks, horizontal and vertical. So just be aware that you can change all those things. Now, this, ne well, this rarely happens on someone's tablet, but if you have Pro Stitcher downloaded to a computer or a laptop, as I do, over here, and you know, here's the thing. Sometimes you might download a block that you know is square, but on your screen, it actually looks like a rectangle. If it doesn't look right, this is where you're gonna come in display over here to monitor, and you may have to change these numbers. You might actually have to measure your screen and put those numbers in and it should fix that problem. Okay, so that is display. Now, defaults. 
these are the defaults. Um, actually, I think I have changed this. The default should be six here, okay? Um, I tend to use auto jump. I don't use auto jump a lot, but just know we had somebody change this nudge to um, zero once and that caused us all sorts of problems because it took us a long time to find. OptiStitch. Okay, OptiStitch is ProStitcher's built-in speedometer. ProStitcher knows how fast it can run on your specific machine doing different things. So like if you're doing ovals or circles, you're going to be able to go faster than if you're doing a design that has points in it because ProStitcher actually has to decelerate into the point and then accelerate out of it. I am not a big proponent of messing around with the speed. I know that there are other teachers out there who disagree with me, and that's okay. We can both be right. I generally leave my OptiStitch on and let it handle ProStitcher. Now, if I am getting thread breaks, I'm going to, so that's what it would look like if I'm letting OptiStitch run life. If I want to customize my speed, which that this is something that's getting talked about a lot and ad nauseum, in my opinion, um, a lot of people don't like to run their machine as fast as possible. If that is the case, I would take my speed down maybe to like 70 or whatever, let's say 60 ish. I'm going to get close. And then you want your acceleration to be below that, okay? So maybe like between a half and two thirds of it. So if I'm at 63, 35 would be okay. That's kind of the percentage-ish that you want, okay? But I'm going to be honest with you, most of the time, this is off when I'm quilting, unless I'm having problems with thread breaks. Like if I'm using a metallic thread, I'm going to slow down my machine. If I'm using Omni and I'm not having any problems, time is money, my friends. I'm running that machine at full speed. I paid for a fast machine and I'm going to use it. Yeah, because there's no quilt police to arrest me. So I can do that. All right, let's move on. Auto jump. Auto jump is when the design ends and the next design starts. Where this comes into play a lot is when you have cropped something off. Okay? And you know how when you um when you don't close the edges, you have all those jumps. All right? So the default setting is 6 inches. If you don't really want your machine to jump 6 inches, you can change this. All right? So um, if you buy some of my notebook projects or some things like that, I will say set your auto jump to zero. And this is where you would do it. Click on the box, your flyout calculator shows up, change it to zero, enter. And now your machine will not jump at all. It will wait for you to let it loose again. Okay, stitches per inch. This is where we set um, our defaults for ourselves. Um, so right now, this is not where I would normally have this, I guess. But my stitches per inch, I usually have at 11. So let's go ahead and change that. And then my basting, uh, I usually have my baste at about a half an inch. Okay, so you can set those things up right there. And then when I click off it, those those settings should stick. All right, but this is simulator. Just remember that, but you can do it on your tablet. Tie-offs. If you have ProStitcher Premium, you have more to play with here, okay? If you're in ProStitcher Lite, I believe you just have five, and you can't change anything over here. I'm not positive about the distance on ProStitcher Lite, okay? But this is what it looks like in Premium. So right now it's set at two. I generally have this set at five, I think, on my machine, and I leave the distance alone. You have two different kinds of uh, tie-offs. Tack means it just kind of goes in a row, and, um, oh no, I'm sorry, backwards. Micro kind of goes in a row, and then tack goes back and forth to kind of pin it down. All right, 
and and you can turn on your start and ends here and then they'll stay on okay so just know that pull up so pull up is confusing for people pull up means when pro stitcher is ready to start do you want it to uh, do one stitch and pull up your bobbin thread and i say yes yes i want it to do that pull up auto is when it goes down and pulls it up and moves out of the way i use both of those now be aware that when you're in pro stitcher and you have a design open let me just open something so i have it and you go to pro stitcher quilt you have all these buttons here and you can turn them on and off at will no matter what you have turned on in your settings just be aware of that they're always here for you to change okay pause delay pause delay is that feature that is probably on your machine when it's new is and that is that when it starts stitching a pro stitcher design after a few seconds or after a few inches it stops and lets you cut the thread this is what it's called pause delay right now this one is set up for two seconds okay i generally on my actual machine have turned this off because i might be a tiny bit type a all right stitch stats this is not available on pro stitcher light okay but stitch stat tells you how many stitches are in this design how long it's going to stitch out and how much thread it's going to use i think that's a really valuable thing not so much when i'm doing a design like this but just for kicks let's see if i can open oh that wasn't what i wanted to open let's do a file clear all let's open a workspace oh this is not in here um sorry i thought i had something oh let's go to my edge to edge folder and let's just open this one okay so here i have a whole edge to edge setup so let's go back to settings and look at stitch stats now this has 92,000 almost 93,000 stitches it's going to take one hour 59 minutes and 13 seconds to stitch out so two hours it's going to take 80 84 151 inches of thread okay um this is important to me first of all this time is just stitching time not your advancing time so so that is probably at least doubled um, for what it's actually going to take you because you know you're probably going to have to change the bobbin once or twice now 92,000 stitches that is an important number to me and what that does for me is it tells me that if i put in a new needle at the beginning of this project i'm probably going to be okay on this project all right but if i make it the needle companies tell us that the needles are good for about 80,000 stitches i am certainly not going to stop at 80,000 stitches and change the needle but if i have been quilting along and everything's fine and all of a sudden you know two-thirds of the way down the quilt i start having a lot of thread breaks that could be a red flag to me you know i'm getting close to that 80. guys i'm going to tell you right now i've done quilts with 270,000 stitches and never had to change a needle but i do start with a fresh needle at the beginning of a project and this number is kind of just a red flag warning for me so that's why i like stitch stats now advanced if we go into advanced okay um there are several things in here we have communications uh if this is a place where you can reconnect your motors you can reconnect with your machine and i'm going to be perfectly honest that i've never touched this reverse encoder um and i don't know why you would but anyways there it is uh it it's got your wi-fi if you're having problems with your wi-fi you can clear your cache and there's some diagnostics here speed profile i would not mess with this this is what mine is set up right now um i believe that's how many stitches per minute that i can you know maximum stitch per minute that's what my machine can do your number might be different here 
um, logging. So the only time I've used this is when I've had to send in a bug issue to um, Pro Stitcher, but I don't use it very often. And our motors. Now, my torque limit is set at 200. Please do not mess with this number unless you're on the phone with Tech Solutions and they ask you to, all right? But, so these things are things generally you're not going to mess with very much, okay? But let's go back up to general. Over here, we have our thread brake sensor, okay? I have mine turned off, um, and that's just showing. I, um, I, I guess you can turn it on and off here. I actually turn it on and off in your machine screen. Uh, verify before quilt. Do not turn this off. Do not. This is that little box that yells at you and says, make sure your needle is up. Don't take it off. It gives you all sorts of really important information and it will remind you in all those crucial moments that you should look down. Take the 1.2 seconds, look down, make sure your needle is up because when you're moving forward, you could tear a quilt. Okay, I don't keep my motors locked. Now, I told you that before, sometimes people get their tablets into simulation by accident. All right, <laughs> as we say in our family, on accident, on, but you know, on purpose. That's what we say, by accident, on purpose. <laughs> so if you happen to get your crosshairs green on your Pro Stitcher, this is where you would come. Oh, I bumped myself out of it. Okay, you would turn it on. And then you will have to do a full restart on your machine. Okay, and this is actually, I can, I actually can go back and forth between premium and light. Now down here at the bottom, these, this is an important little button down here because I can load my start point at the crosshairs, which is how I often, I most of the time have it set here, or I can load point to point. If I am setting up like several clamshells in a row that I'm going to baseline together and use as a group, then I might want, or the, or I'm going to use the dump truck, the fire truck and the garbage truck or whatever. If I want to load point to point down here, I would do that. But most of the time, I'll be honest with you, 98 time, 98% 98 of the time, I'm at load point at crosshairs. Okay. So you now know about all the settings and those are important things and they can be really helpful to you. But please, if you're a beginner and this is your first video, don't go change them all. Take some time, see how you use Pro Stitcher and you know which features you love and which ones you never use, and that will help you to know what's important for you, okay? So I hope that this has enlightened you a little bit and taught you a few things about what's in the settings of Pro Stitcher. If you like this video, please give me a like and follow. Um, and you are always welcome to email me and ask questions about Pro Stitcher or about just long army. Um, that's how I get my idea for these videos. So I hope to see you. Uh, if you want to follow me and find out more, I do have a website at www.okquilting, that's O-H-K-A-Y-E, quilting, and I do send out a newsletter once a month. So thanks for being here, and happy quilting.